I suppose you're still annoyed with me because I dropped over boarding house this morning. No, not at all. Well, good. Then we can spend at least part of tonight together? No, like I told you before, I have other plans tonight. Oh, Tony. Well, I know it can't be Nola because Daddy told me uh, she's going to be staying at the boarding house now that Mr. McCord's in London. Yeah, listen, I thought we decided out in Chicago that there weren't going to be any strings attached to this relationship. We were both free agents, right? Uh-huh. We are. I just want to spend as much time with you as I can. Well, tonight it's impossible. All right. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi, uh, listen, I'm sorry about class, but okay. things just got too That's busy. It's all right, Derek. You might have missed class, but you're here. You're still here for your uh, favorite lady. Really? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Hi. Hi. Oh, that, re that reminds me. I just spoke to the Metro D, and he's going to be expecting both of you at the hideout for the free dinner tonight that Trisha and I want to treat you to. It's very nice of you. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Um, actually, though, tonight isn't uh, going to work for me. Oh, Hillary. You told me that any night was fine, and all I had to do was check with Derek. I know. It's it's just tonight's not good. Well, I'm sorry, Vanessa. Is there some other night we could do it when Hillary's, you know, not busy? Uh, sure. Any time is fine, actually. It's just that, well, tonight is Tony's night off, too, and so I, I thought I'd enjoy talking to both of you. Well, we'll have to take a rain check. So, do you need a ride home? Yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, Leslie, I'd be happy to oh, drop you. Oh, thanks, Derek. All right. All right, we'll see you later. Bye. Take care. See you. Bye. Well, I'm gonna put this stuff away and get out of here. <clears throat> I'll walk with you. No, listen, I don't want to hold you up. I gotta take care of a couple things in the office anyways. You won't be holding me up. I have to change. And that way, at least, I'll have the pleasure of your company as far as the parking lot. You know, now I know how Derek felt when he found out that Hillary had other plans for tonight. Carrie, I wish you'd reconsider and spend a few more days. Carrie, please, you've got to promise me, if you find these old tensions coming back, you've got to readmit yourself again right away. Sarah, I can't tell you how important it is to me to be at home waiting for Ross when he gets home today. And I'm feeling so much better, Sarah. Excuse me. Dr. McIntyre. Yes. Yes, I'll be right there. In the meantime, uh, try to find Kelly Nelson. He's familiar with the patient. Right. Uh, Carrie, I'll be right back. There's a, a mild medication that Dr. McChesney and I would like you to take. Please, I have got to get out of here. I've got to get out of Springfield before it's too late. Freedom is finally mine, and I can't wait. Dr. Mac... Oh, hi, Carrie. I'm sorry. Hi, Carrie. I was just looking for Dr. McIntyre. Ah, oh, yes. Well, she just zoomed out on some emergency or other. Yeah, right. Hmm. What's up? Well, I have a letter from Dr. Marler that I was supposed to give to Dr. McIntyre, and... Oh, so? Hmm. Leave it on the desk. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> I think I will. Yeah. Are we, um, <clears throat> seeing you tomorrow? Oh, I hope not. Well, I, what I mean to say is that I'm supposed to get released this afternoon. Oh, good. Oh, that's good news. It is the best news, and I'm feeling so much better, and I am so grateful to everyone for all the help they gave me while I was here. Well, good. It was our pleasure. Thanks. I will, uh, good wishes to you. Thank you very much. Night, Katie. Night. too late. Besides, <laughs> I don't think Sarah's going to believe you anyway. Well, how did you like the tour of Paris? Oh, <laughs> like everything else on this trip. I will never forget it. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? Um, 
there. I was thinking about that, that young Englishman we ran into outside the restaurant. He, he called you by name. I've never seen him before in my life. He was obviously half drunk and didn't know what he was saying. I have very little patience for that sort of thing. He seemed harmless enough. People who lose control because of alcohol or drugs or whatever are people who have very little self-respect. Or people who are trying to run away from something within themselves that they just simply can't deal with. Well, that may be true, but it doesn't stop us from feeling a little compassion, will it? I have no compassion for people like that. I admire strength. After all, we all have things within ourselves that we'd like to change, but you don't change them by escaping from reality. You change them by setting goals and then following through on them. You know, the more I know about you and how successful you've been so young without any help from your family, the more I admire you. You and I are very much alike in that respect, Jennifer. Mm. You left home when you were 17. You dealt with many, many hardships. And yet you survived. You didn't waste time feeling sorry for yourself. You are a survivor. And so am I. <laughs> Look like a tired survivor. Would you like to go back to the hotel? <laughs> no. I'd like to stay here and drink in this beautiful view and take back another wonderful memory. Europe is going to be a very lonely place without you. I miss you too, Lou. But I, I think it's going to be an important time for us. Why do you hear that? Because it's going to give us a chance to adjust to being friends when we get home. Jennifer, we have to have a talk. I was going to wait until we got back to the hotel. But time is slipping away from us, and we can't waste any more time. I am so glad my father brought you by tonight. I haven't seen you since the day you helped to rescue Alan, and I, I wanted to thank you again so oh, much. Please hope no thanks are necessary. Mike asked me to stop by the other evening, but I knew there'd be people here who don't know who I am, so I couldn't afford to take the chance. Oh. May I get you a drink? Oh, thanks. Uh, white wine. Bird, white wine all right oh, for you? for me, too. Thank Honey, you. I see. Yeah. I'll, I'll help you. Please sit down. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Listen, there's another reason why I'm really glad that you came by. I, my father's explained to me why it's necessary for you to work undercover at Spalding Enterprises. But I'm a little confused because, well, now that Goff is dead and Wayne Jennings, I, I don't understand why you still have to work there undercover. Is, could you explain that to me? Well... Well, let's just say I work for a very thorough boss who insists that every detail be checked out, cataloged, before we can mark a case officially closed. Well, also, has there been any information on the whereabouts of that money I left in the locker at the airport? No, nothing yet. But when we do find something out, I'll be able to start looking for whoever has that duplicate key and therefore find out who's got the money. Now, I know the assumption is that it was some messenger who worked for Lucian Goff, but... If it was he, he must know that Mr. Goff and Wayne Jennings are dead, so why wouldn't he be spending the money by now? That's a very good point, Mrs. Bauer. I'm bothered by the same thing. The only thing I can come up with is that perhaps he's afraid to spend it, or maybe he just doesn't have to. Bert? Why, thank you, Al. Welcome, darling. Hi. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. You know, I just remembered thank something. You. you said to try to think if Goff had said something up there in that tram, and he right. did. And I just remember what he said. He said... Wait a minute, let me get straight. You said, I have to survive because if I don't, he will end up with all the money and he's a lousy rinse to begin with. Oh, oh ladies, what an hour well, you're arriving. Henry. I do apologize. Hello. Uh, but I had something important that I had to do at the office before I could leave. Well, we're glad you're here. Can I get you a drink? Oh, please, any little thing. Oh, incidentally, uh, I had to go out to the airport on an errand, and I ran into Ross just back from Chicago, and he was going straight to the hospital to check on poor Carrie. Nobody's ever going to be able to put me in one of these places ever again. When I walk out of that door, it is going to be the end of Mrs. Marler forever. There's a whole new wonderful life waiting for me out there. And I'll kill anyone who tries to stop me. 